everybody, welcome back. Uh, I'm I'm recording today from a very very cool place. I'm in Ohio, and I don't I don't even know why I would go to Ohio. It's so far out of our mission, but yet here we are, and we have just finished the most amazing conference probably that I have ever experienced because I have had an opportunity to increase my family by hundreds of people, brothers and sisters from all walks of life. And today I have two special guests. I'm excited to introduce them. But first, a scripture, Romans chapter 10, verse one. My Bible's not in front of me, so I'll wing it, but, <laughs> but Paul talked about how his heart's desire was that his people, Israel, should be saved. And for those of you who have watched our webcast, you know that my heart's desire is for my people. But I have next to me a man who has a ministry to the Amish people. My brother, Joe Kime, right here. And another man who has a ministry to the Hooterite people, Edwin... Waldner. Edwin Waldner. And we just thought it might be fun to, to sit down and talk about the similarities and the differences and the challenges and the way that we can support each other as we have kind of parallel ministries trying to lead people to the Lord. So anyway, Edwin and, and Joe, gosh, welcome. Good to be here. Welcome. So uh, let's let's start out and, and maybe Edwin, just take a second, tell people about your ministry and why you do what you do. Hey Amen. we do what we do, faith that is motivated by love. When the love of Christ, God in each one of us, God is love. And when we get born of the spirit of life, he puts love within our hearts. And love is why each one of us do what we do. We are created to become love. And love works its way out in what we do is ministering life to people and seeing other lives being transformed. And for me, <laughs> Amen. when God met me at 19 years old, he gave me such a burden for my people. I had spent actually seven years in Lancaster County with among the Amish and with Charity Fellowship. But my heart kept tugging me back to South Dakota, where I grew up to my people. I just could feel that pull coming again and again as I was being discipled. My heart's desire, my heart's desire my people. was for the yeah. right people. And there is this longing and this magnet. I was just telling him when when we walk into a store, when we go out and we, we meet people, it's like there's a magnet that draws us and there's a grace that comes. There's a grace there given of God to minister life. And it's not of us. What God's given to Joe, what God's given to Brother Lance here, to myself, it's a grace for a specific call. Mm -hmm. And the glory belongs to God because it comes from heaven, it goes back to heaven, and it, it's love. Love is that motivating factor. I love my people. I love Amen. the Amish. I love the Mormons. I love people, but there's something there that God has put in each one of us that is just motivating us. That's why Paul found himself in the synagogue again and again and being cast out, went back to the synagogue. That's why he went back to Jerusalem. He crazy? was forbidden. Don't go back to Jerusalem. Bonds await him. His heart couldn't keep him. It's called love. It is, it is amazing to me that Paul knew that his ministry was to the uncircumcised, to the Gentiles. And where did he go when he reached every town? Where did he go first? To his people, to the synagogue. Joe. Yes. Tell us about your world. Well, I uh, I was thinking of a scripture that I have to, to share as you guys were talking. Okay. And so I'm going to share this scripture. But obviously my people are the Amish. And so. And wait, just, just real quick. Six or seven weeks ago. I had never spoken to an Amish person in my life. And Joe came into my life, or I came into his, we bumped into each other because God does what God does. Mm -hmm. I really love the Amish people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's, uh, so 
I, you know, I mean, you're born into the Amish and you find out that your parents were Amish, your grandparents and so forth, generations of Amish, they are your people. And uh, when I got saved at the age of 18 in 1985, um, I realized after studying the scriptures that I could no longer be part of my people who were part of a system. They were trapped in a system that really led to death. There was no life in it. And in order for me to uh, go and be with people who uh, taught the truth, I had to leave my people. And for 15 years, I did my own thing. We were excommunicated and shunned and weren't allowed to come around of our own family, not allowed on the property. But after 15 years of being separate and away from my family, um, felt the call to go back and be missionaries and share the gospel with my people because of the same love that Edwin was talking about. There was this love that never went away, always thought about my people and um, didn't know what it would look like, had no idea, no, no missionary had ever gone to the Amish. In fact, most people on the outside of the Amish would look at the Amish and say, if anybody's a Christian, they are. But my, my heart, and I want to I read this from, from uh, Paul, because Paul was a Jew called to the Gentiles, but he too had his, his people on his heart here in Romans chapter 9. I say the truth in Christ. I say the truth. I lie not. My conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost that I have a great heaviness and a continual sorrow in my heart. For I could wish that myself were accursed from Christ. He, he would, he, if he could save his people at the expense of his own soul. Yeah, yeah. That's how much he loved his Isn't people. Isn't that crazy? That is. Isn't it wonderful? Yeah, and we, we have that same, same uh -huh. sense about ourselves. Yeah. He uh, had his people for my kinsmen, my brethren my kinsmen in the flesh. And, and that, that's why I think this interview is so amazing because you have three people from three different peoples, people groups, feeling that same thing and being able to relate with Paul. It's, it's almost like there's one God, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's almost yeah. like there's one God who's driving all of this. And, you know, I, I, I love that that passage that I started with continues. It talks about the people who have a zeal for God. Mm. These are people who want to be good in all three of these communities. They want to be good. They want to be right. They have a zeal for God, but they're lacking one thing. It says that, but not unto what? Knowledge. Knowledge. Yeah. Knowledge. I want to say something that's interesting as you were sharing. The... Um, each group that's represented here has created a community. The Amish have a community, the Hutterites have community, they have community. Mm -hmm. The world looks at that, and as, and as was mentioned, the Hutterites, people come out there, they're such nice people. Mm -hmm. Look how they get along. Look how this, how this is functioning. How can they do this? And they must be godly. But accept that you're born again. You cannot enter the kingdom of God. And the kingdom of God comes not by observation. People look at the external and think this must be the kingdom of God. The God must be in this. But that's not an outward corporation or an or a green together. Even if a factory works together, makes an iPhone, it doesn't make it Christ. Mm -hmm. It doesn't give assurance of salvation. It doesn't give personal security. It doesn't bring everlasting life. And those things can have a false picture given, false picture painted, because deep in the heart, every soul needs to be regenerated, but there's still the longing in all of humanity to be part of community. But the true community, as we experienced here this weekend, is hearts that are knit together in love, mm. where there's love flowing and we would do anything for anybody because we love. 
That's the true community of his people. And I was sitting in the conference, the Holy Spirit spoke to me and says, Junior, these are your people. Mm. And they were from every background. Yes. Was re- so many backgrounds represented <laughs> here. I didn't say Muslims or Hindus, but just what I'm saying is from such variety, True community is a spiritual community where hearts are set free, united to one Lord, one faith, one baptism, Jesus. Amen. And you know, it's it's crazy because when at, at the end of the conference, they call for a time when anybody who didn't get a chance to speak could stand up and share their story. And I was sitting there and I thought, but I've already spoken. But I had to get up one, it only took a minute, but I had to tell these people, I came here among people I didn't even know about even two or three months ago. And I found family, I found brothers, and I found sisters, and I found fellowship. We are all the same. We are the same, and we need, like he said, we need community, but we need community in Christ. We have got to find community in Christ Jesus because as as good as the rest can be, Mormon people are good people. Amish people are good people. Hooterite people. I used to I used to do horse training clinics in Montana. The Hooterites were always there, and they were just really nice people. But being nice doesn't save you, does it? It does not. It just doesn't. So, can we move to another scripture I'd yeah. like to share? Yes. And, and uh, Joe, we'll let you lead off and talk about why this is so cool. But I love First Corinthians. Uh, 2 Corinthians 5.17, it says that when we are in Christ, we become a new creation. And my wife laughs at me because sometimes I will walk past the, I will walk past the mirror in our bathroom and I'll look at it and I say, you look just like a jerk I used to know. <laughs> because truly he makes us new. Joe, mm-hmm. how did he make you new? Well, it's an inner thing, and uh, you know, obviously the outside didn't become new. Uh, It's still uh, flesh, but one day it's going to fall off. It's not the real me. The real me is the one that was made new, and I still remember when I read uh, in Genesis where uh, God clearly said, on the day in the on the very day that you eat of the fruit you will die and and adam ate but then i my question was did he die and the answer was no he continued to live for another 450 years i believe it was Uh, but it helped me understand that while the outside went on living the inside died but when I was born again, that real me, that spirit within me was made alive again. And I was like, I became like Adam before he died. That's that right. new creature right. it's talking about. And you're not excited about that a bit. I am so excited. <laughs> I've never gotten over it. <laughs> I know, it's unbelievable. Now, the, the, that salvation, that Holy Spirit coming down and filling you with the, with the love and spirit of Christ... It can even find you on a John Deere tractor, am I right? Amen. Tell us about that. Absolutely. When John, when God met me on a John Deere tractor in 19, July of 1995, he gave me a brand new heart and I had not known that it's possible to be free from sin. And I only knew where sin was controlling my life. And I, the Lord said, the Lord Jesus, I will forgive you if you will give everything up. And that's when he drove me to my knees on in a cornfield and he specifically showed me everything in the future I'd have to give up. It wasn't until a year and a half later that I had to surrender the colony. But he told me, Junior, you have to give up the colony life. You have to give up your family. Mm. You have to give up your girlfriend, everything. Everything he asked me to surrender later, I came to that question, are you gonna actually let it go? And but when I fully surrendered, the Holy Spirit came in and made me a brand new creation. But it's been a journey since then. One of the things I felt the Lord wanted me to mention is when you leave a system, it takes God a little bit of time to take the system out of you. <laughs> and oh, that system, oh, no matter where you're from, 
let me say this i have come to understand witchcraft as manipulation and control and when you have people that are dominating you manipulating and controlling you you're part of his system that's not how the holy spirit operates they that are led by the spirit of god are the sons of god and if ministry and coming out of a how to write ministry coming out of how to write people i notice manipulation working in my life i notice control coming i notice religious things where i'll be pressuring people kept losing my peace and then god teaching me deliverance from that and learning to allow the holy spirit to lead and so many people today are caught up in systems mm -hmm. where they're being dominated and controlled and they're wondering why can't i get my mind under control mm -hmm. it's witchcraft mm -hmm. run look for a place where the holy spirit is there is liberty mm -hmm. there is freedom there is clarity of mind no mental depression no heaviness the, he gives us a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness and where the Holy Spirit works, like you see it in the book of Acts, when the Spirit of God moves, He is so gentle, so sweet. It's just precious. Freedom from religion. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. and, and you know, just real quickly, I will just share mine. Some of you have heard this before, but, but my wife and I, we reached a point. It, it, our life had become so dark. I was actually seriously contemplating suicide. Everything I loved, everyone I loved it being, it was being torn away. I was so broken. And one day we, we ordered a couple of Bibles. So when that UPS truck came, oh, it was great. We opened those Bibles. We, we, we knelt before God and we said, God, it doesn't matter what the cost is, our home, our lands, our cars. But I remember the strange thing was before I was willing to lose some things to know God. This was the only time I said, God, even if it requires our children, we have got to know who you are. And then I read, you know, we've been talking about these scriptures that really move us. I read Matthew chapter one, and I was saved in the genealogy of Matthew chapter one. I couldn't even pronounce the names and I didn't know why they mattered. Mm. But I was reading the word of God after I had surrendered to God mm. and I was saved. That moment in our lives, when everything changes, mm -hmm. what happens? It's supernatural. It, 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 it's something that you can't manufacture. But when it comes, it just it came down over me. I wept like a baby. I felt my sin get washed away. I felt uh, the love of God like I had never felt it before. It was real. I could go to an unbeliever, which is what I did. I went to my girlfriend, tried to explain to her what happened that afternoon. She had never experienced it. She had no idea what I was talking about. But boy, it was real to me. And it, and it changed, it was, it never, it, it changed me. It was, it was radical. It was real. It was unexplainable. Undeniable. Other, yeah, undeniable. Yeah. Yeah, crazy. Crazy. Well, let's close out on this passage, shall we? Uh, I love one of my favorite passages is 1 John 5, 13, where he says, I write these things that you may know. If you have the Son, you have eternal life. Before that day reading the scriptures, before Joe had his experience, before you had your experience on a tractor, did you ever know that you had eternal life. And do you know today that you do? Why is that important? It's important because God's word, first of all, um, it, it's a fact. I, I look at the word of God and I say, okay, there is a fact. <laughs> God said, and I believe it. I I can have assurance. And, and, and the reason I can have assurance is it's not based on what I did. It's based on what God did for me it's amen. his work amen therefore he can say you can have assurance with certainty know that you have eternal life 
and that you may know. That's present tense. That's today. Yeah. Today. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How, what was life like for you before? It was miserable. <laughs> it was miserable to be a bond slave to sin mm-hmm. for any soul. When you have sin, the devil and the world <laughs> controlling you, there is not a soul. I do not care how they act. When the heart is empty, it is empty. And when there's demonic junk going on, it is never pleasant in the heart or in the soul. But we have now received abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness through Jesus Christ. And it says we're more than conquerors. 